that someone tried to put the baffling puzzle pieces of other life in the universe together for me in a more coherent picture was October 1983. That's when I was still trying to go forward with the HBO project in spite of government efforts to block me. A Washington DC military source who claimed first-hand interaction with at least one type of non-human agreed to talk with me off the record about the type that he knew as extraterrestrial biological entities, also known as Ebens. He was aware that on April 9, 1983, at Kirtland Air Force Base, I was shown an alleged briefing document for an unnamed U.S. president, and it said extraterrestrial biological entities, or Ebens, have manipulated DNA in already evolving primates to create Homo sapien. The military source told me that was true. But he stressed that no one in the American government with access to that knowledge ever wanted to be alive. If or when such an announcement were broadcast to the world, the humans are someone else's experimental androids. He told me that he had talked firsthand with a U.S. Air Force captain who received telepathic communication from one non-human at a crash site in the Roswell region. He said 1949, not 1947. Because the captain, more than anyone else at the crash site, could clearly and correctly receive mind-to-mind -mind communication from the non-human and Eben. The captain was assigned to live with this entity called EBA-1 at the Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico until EBA died of unknown causes on June 18, 1952. That Air Force captain said one of the most important transmissions that he ever received from this Eben was, quote, We made you. We put you here on Earth. But you have to live it, close quote. I typed up notes after the October 18, 1983 meeting that began with this military source talking about information gained from EBA-1 and another captured being called EBA-2. Here are some brief excerpts from my October 1983 notes in Washington, D.C. October 18th, EBA-2, trying to teach human scientists about their EBA technology they use a completely different set of physical laws than ours. Our physics would not apply in their civilization, but theirs can apply in ours. They, the Ebens, travel interdimensionally, many times faster than the speed of light, like the corner of a napkin folded to its opposite corner. There are many dimensions, two of which we might relate to but at least a dozen dimensions we would not relate to. All Ebens look alike. Their society is worldwide on a planet in the Zeta Reticuli binary solar system about 39 light years from Earth. Hive minds, all telepathic. Leaders are for life. Even though they look pretty much the same, there are personality differences. The Ebens brought five different humanoid species, he said to me. Juvenile delinquents, possibly. 
from somewhere else in the cosmos to this planet Earth a long time ago. Our whole planet is a sociological experiment, according to this whistleblower. That's why the Ebens persist in the so-called guardian role versus the renegade blonde, Swedes, Nordics, and other ET types. Are there secret wars ongoing to protect humans that are kept in a state of ignorance? He said the problem is if the Ebens go away from Earth, what will happen? They have a computer base inside of our moon and throughout our solar system, he said. Is that sufficient monitoring to keep the blonde Swedes, reptilians, and others in check? He said the Swedes, quote, have a large menagerie of cloned biological entities, close quote, which do work for them everywhere. He talked to me about the presidents and what they knew. He said Truman, 1945 to 1953, knew everything at the time. And then Ike, 1953 to 1961, knew everything but put a lid on it. Then came Kennedy, 1961 to 1963. He wanted to tell the whole world about the alien presence and was killed in Dallas on November 22, 1963 for trying to open up the truth. LBJ, 1963 to 69, he did not want to know because he heard rumors about what happened to Kennedy. Nixon, 1969 to 1974, knew and bragged about his inside knowledge to friends, showed Jackie Gleason some retrieved craft and ET bodies preserved in tubes hanging on walls underground at Eglund Air Force Base near Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Ford, 1974 to 1977, the whistleblower said he did not know if he was ever briefed on anything. Jimmy Carter, 1977 to 1981, briefed in 1976 and again later on, but decided the story was too big to deal with. Ronald Reagan, 1981 to 1989. He was brief during the campaign because he was so pro-military that MJ-12 wanted to quiet him down a little. And then he was briefed in March 1981 after the election by CIA director with CIA, DIA, NSA, and NRO advisors present. And about that word reincarnation, he said that the Ebens described this Quote, only so many souls are allowed per planet, close quote. They are recycled constantly at birth and death. But why? After that conversation, I didn't know who to trust or what to believe in 1983. So I didn't do anything public with this Washington, D.C. military sources information. Then a decade later, an alleged 1950s government document was leaked on March 7, 1994. This is its title. Quote, Restricted Psalm 101 Majestic 12 Group Special Operations Manual. Extraterrestrial Entities and Technology Recovery and Disposal. Top Secret Magic Eyes Only Warning. This is a top secret magic eyes only document containing compartmentalized information essential to the national security of the United States. Eyes only access to the material herein is strictly limited to personnel possessing Magic 12 clearance level. Examination or use by unauthorized personnel is strictly forbidden and is punishable by federal law. Since the U.S. War Office was transitioned to the U.S. Department of the Army under the Department of Defense in 1949, the implication is that this Psalm 101 training manual for extraterrestrial entities and technology recovery and disposal was first produced before 1949 and updated in April 1954. The unofficial leak of this Psalm 101 manual started at a La Crosse, Wisconsin pharmacy 
when 32 pages of text and drawings showed up on 35 millimeter negative film addressed to Don Berliner at the Fund for UFO Research in Maryland. The film was in an envelope postmarked March 7, 1994. Don Berliner gave Bob Wood, an aerospace engineer retiring from McDonnell Douglas, permission to print the negatives for study. The first negative frame was the Psalm 101 cover. Then on page 6 of the training manual is section 10, description of extraterrestrial biological entities, EBA type 1 and EBA type 2. EBA type 1. These entities are humanoid and might be mistaken for human beings of the oriental race, if seen from a distance. They are bipedal, 5 feet to 5 feet 4 inches in height, and weigh 80 to 100 pounds. Proportionally, they are similar to humans, although the cranium is somewhat larger and more rounded. The skin is a pale, chalky yellow in color, thick and slightly pebbled in appearance. This was odd to read because the gray ebens and other gray types are not described by people, let's say, in the human abduction or a whistleblower as chalky yellow in color. Is this yet another type or something related to the metabolism of the ebens? I'm now showing a charcoal illustration that a government whistleblower told me, quote, is almost like a photograph of an eben the acronym the U.S. government uses for extraterrestrial biological entities. The Psalm 101 manual continues, quote, The eyes are small, wide-set, almond-shaped, with brownish-black irises with very large pupils. The whites of the eyes are not like that of humans, but have a pale gray cast. The ears are small and set low on the skull. The nose is thin and long, and the mouth is wider than in humans, and nearly lipless. There is no apparent facial hair and very little body hair, that being very fine and confined to the underarm and the groin area. The body is thin and without apparent body fat, but the muscles are well developed. The hands are small with four long digits, but no opposable thumb. The outside digit is jointed in a manner as to be nearly opposable, and there is no webbing between the fingers as there is in humans. The legs are slightly but noticeably bowed, and the feet are somewhat splayed and proportionally large. A second type on page 6 of the Psalm 101 manual states, EBA type 2. These smaller entities are humanoid but differ from type 1 in many respects. They are bipedal, 3 feet 5 inches to 4 feet 2 inches in height and weigh 25 to 50 pounds. Proportionally, the head is much larger than humans or type 1 ebas, the cranium being much larger and elongated. The eyes are very large, slanted, and nearly wrap around the side of the skull. They are black with no white showing. There is no noticeable brow ridge, and the skull has a slight peak that runs over the crown. The nose consists of only two small slits, which sit high above the slit-like mouth. There are no external ears. The skin is a pale bluish-gray color, being somewhat darker on the back of the creature, and is very smooth and fine-celled. There is no hair on either the face or the body, and these creatures do not appear to be mammalian. The arms are long in proportion to the legs, and the hands have three long tapering fingers and a thumb, which is nearly as long as the fingers. The second finger is thicker than the other, but not as long as the index finger. The feet are small and narrow, and four toes are joined together inside a membrane. Would a membrane around four toes explain tracks at animal mutilation sites where ranchers and law enforcement have described hoof-like tracks or ice cream cone-shaped tracks? It is not definitely known where either type of creature originated, but it seems certain that they did not evolve on Earth. It is further evident, although not certain, that they may have originated on two different planets, close quote. And this is from the Psalm 101 training manual. 
Today, I can add the probability that EBA1 types genetically manufactured EBA type 2s to do work on this planet. That means abductees have usually been handled by the small, large, black-eyed little guys, not the prime even intelligence behind the genetically cloned biological entities or androids. The concept of cloned biological entities of various types, made by Ebens and other extraterrestrial types, has emerged in more details about five different non-human species allegedly presented in a briefing for U.S. President Ronald Reagan. This release 27A, Reagan Briefing, was included in a series of 35 reports from 2005 to 2007, posted in order, quote, to facilitate the gradual release of confidential documents pertaining to a top secret exchange program of 12 U.S. military personnel to Serpo, a planet of Zeta Reticuli, and this happened between the years 1965 to 1978. The information began to be released on 2 November 2005 by a retired senior official within the United States Defense Intelligence Agency. He calls himself anonymous. Until he chooses to make his name known, this is the way he will be represented here. Anonymous reports that he is not acting individually and is part of a group of six DIA personnel working together as an alliance of three current and three former Defense Intelligence Agency employees. He is their chief spokesman, close quote. The following excerpts are allegedly from a transcript of a tape recording made at Camp David, Maryland for President Ronald Reagan on March 6 and March 8, 1981 about the subject of, quote, unidentified flying objects and extraterrestrial visitation of Earth, close quote. Leading the discussion was CIA Director William Casey, along with CIA advisors and a caretaker of the ET history. Casey was Reagan's campaign manager in 1980, and then President Reagan asked Casey to become CIA director from 1981 to 1987. That means this briefing, March 6 to 8, 1981, was only two months after Ronald Reagan first took office on January 20th, 1981, as President of the United States. I begin with excerpts from the presidential briefing as the anonymous caretaker speaks to President Reagan. Quote, The United States of America has been visited by extraterrestrial visitors since 1947. We have proof of that, close quote. My own note is that the truth about crashes, that we appear to have history of a crash retrieval six years before Roswell events, and that was in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, allegedly in the first part of 1941 and discussed in leaked Majestic 12 documents from which a, quote, neutronic propulsion device was retrieved and later delivered to Robert Oppenheimer when he began work at Los Alamos, New Mexico to produce the first American atomic bomb. The caretaker says, however, we also have some proof that Earth has been visited for many thousands of years by various races of extraterrestrial visitors. Mr. President, I'll just refer to those visitors as ETs. In July 1947, a remarkable event occurred in New Mexico. During a storm, two ET spacecraft crashed. One crashed southwest of Corona, New Mexico, and one crashed near Dadel, New Mexico. The U.S. Army eventually found both sites and recovered all of the debris and one live alien. I'll refer to this live alien as EBA-1. What does that mean? Do we have codes or a special terminology for this? President Reagan asked. Mr. President, EBA means extraterrestrial biological entity. It was a code designated to this creature by the U.S. Army back in those days. This creature was not human, and we had to decide on a term for it. So scientists designated the creature as EBA-1. 
We also referred to it as NOAA. There was different terminology used by various aspects of the U.S. military and intelligence community back then. Can we classify them? Can we connect them with anything earthly? No, Mr. President. They don't have any similar characteristics of a human, with the exception that they have eyes, ears, and a mouth. Their internal body organs are different. Their skin is entirely different from human. We could not classify any part of the aliens with humans. They had blood and skin, although considerably different than human skin. Their eyes had two different eyelids, probably because their home planet was very bright. Is time the same on their planet as on ours? No, Mr. President. Time is very different on the Eben planet, which, by the way, we call Serpo. When you look in Latin and you find the word S-E-R-P-O, it means to creep or crawl. Perhaps they meant like a snake. Their day is approximately 40 hours. That is measured by the movement of their two suns. The solar system containing Serpo is a binary star system, two suns, rather than the one sun like our solar system. The distance from Earth to Serpo is about 40 light years. They can travel that in about nine months of our time. I am no scientist, but as I mentioned earlier, they can travel that great distance by means of space tunnels. They seem to be able to bend the distance from one point in space to another. Just how they do this must be explained scientifically. Are they all friendly? Advisor number one. Mr. President, that is a very difficult question to answer. There are many parameters that we follow to evaluate the threat. However, we have little intelligence on four of the five visitors. We have plenty of intel on the Ebens. They've given us everything we've asked for. They have also helped us to understand the other four species. I'm afraid to say, Mr. President, and please don't misunderstand my words, but we think one of the species is very hostile. William Casey, CIA Director. Mr. President, we have intelligence that would indicate this one species of aliens have abducted people from Earth. They have performed scientific and medical tests on these humans. To the best of our knowledge, no humans have been killed, but as advisor number one stated, the intelligence is from witnesses and we haven't thoroughly evaluated this intelligence. We have captured one of these hostile aliens. This gets into some very, very sensitive areas, Mr. President. I strongly suggest we end this discussion and move on to any further questions that you might have and then get back to this. I don't think we are prepared to provide you with accurate answers to your questions about the potentially hostile aliens at this time, close quote. And that was March 6 to 8, 1981. President Reagan said, okay, but expect this to be given to me as soon as possible. I want to know everything about these hostile creatures. So, I mean, we should start forming policies on how to deal with them. Advisor number one, do we have operational war plans on this? Advisor number one. Yes, Mr. President, we have war plans on all potential threats to our country. William Casey. Okay, give the president the names, caretaker. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. The five non-human species are called Ebens, Archaloids, Quadloids, Heploloids, and Trontoloids. These names were given to the alien species by the intelligence community, specifically by MJ-5. The Ebens are friendly. The Tronaloids are the dangerous ones. We call the hostile aliens simply that, HAV, meaning hostile alien visitors. MJ-12 placed that code on them back as early in the 1950s. A note about MJ-5. 
a member of Majestic or Majority 12, also known as MJ-12, is this group that was originally organized in September 1947 after the July 1947 Roswell and other UFO crash incidents. That's when President Harry Truman organized MJ-12 as a secret committee of scientists, military leaders, businessmen, and government officials under an executive order to monitor and analyze the interactions of non-human intelligences with Earth and to organize back engineering of advanced ET technologies retrieved from downed ET craft. In the briefing, President Ronald Reagan said, you mean to say these HAVs have been visiting us and kidnapping our people since the 1950s? William Casey. Mr. President, we have some indication that they might have been doing this for some time. But we can be sure that the Ebens have never done this. They are extremely peaceful and they would not harm a living soul, including animals, close quote. In contrast to what the CIA director told President Reagan, this can't be a true statement about the Ebens because it was Ebens that abducted the Colorado couple from the Longmont Highway in November of 1980. President Reagan, my God, just knowing we have names for these things is amazing. Which one did we capture? William Casey. Well, Mr. President, we have a tronoloid, but it is dead. We captured it in 1961 in Canada, and we had it in captivity until 1962 when it died. Advisor number one. Mr. President, these hostile aliens are pretty sneaky. They seem to appear and disappear, which is beyond our technical understanding. They also seem to float or defy gravity. We have actual photographs of them doing this. We have a classic abduction incident that was recorded by military intelligence personnel. It happened in 1979 near a military base. President Reagan, where? Advisor number one, in New Mexico. The caretaker. New Mexico is similar to the home planet of the Ebens. I now understand that the Ebens originally come from a desert-like planet in the binary G2 solar system Zeta 1 and 2 reticuli. And this is information that comes from abductees I've interviewed and from other government whistleblowers. And this is what they're talking about right now in this briefing with President Reagan. Those binary suns are very similar to our own yellow sun. And they say to President Reagan, quote, since we do not know which planet the Tronoloids came from. And then the caretaker is interrupted by advisor number four. Advisor number four says, I think we do. I think the Ebens gave us that information. We know the star group. It is close to our solar system in astronomical terms, maybe 10 and a half light years away. It's on the third planet of the Epsilon Eridani solar system. It's the Tronoloids, and they are actually closer to us than the Ebens are. Epsilon Eridani on the left is an orange dwarf star in the constellation Eridanus, a cooler, fainter K2V solar spectrum compared to our G2V sun. At 10.5 light years from Earth, Epsilon Eridani is in a multiple star system and has an estimated 82% of our sun's mass on the right and 74% of our sun's radius, but only 34% of our sun's luminosity. Our sun is much brighter. The Epsilon Eridani is an orange color versus our yellow sun, and it's dimmer. The Reagan briefing indicates the third planet in the Epsilon Eridani solar system is the home of the hostile insect Trontoloids. Epsilon Eridani has a large ring Jupiter-like gaseous planet called Epsilon Eridani b and a probable second rocky planet called Epsilon Eridani c and it might even have a third distant planet in one of two asteroid belts. 
Our solar system is underlined in red at the center of this three-dimensional star map of our region in the Milky Way galaxy. In the lower left of our solar system is Epsilon Eridani, also underlined in red. Not far from Epsilon Eridani is Tau Ceti, underlined in red, and Tau Ceti has been referenced by people in the human abduction syndrome as a solar system also containing humanoid life. When astronomers Frank Drake and Carl Sagan in 1960 first started to look for radio signals from intelligent extraterrestrials, they turned their radio telescope on both Epsilon Eridani and Tau Ceti. But no signals were found then. President Reagan's 1981 briefers would say that is because SETI was looking in the wrong frequencies, or the very advanced tronoloids have a way to cloak their planet. Was this Astronomy Magazine cover in December 2007 another leak from government intelligence sources trying to condition the public that there is other life in our galaxy and beyond? because they already know about the dangerous tronoloid insect beings on a planet in the Epsilon Eridani solar system?